All right, Entree Architect community, it is 4 p.m. or thereabouts, which means it must be time for the Entree Architect Context and Clarity Live session for, where are we? Thursday, May 13th, 2021. Thank you for joining us today. As you come in, say hi. Let us know that you're here. Let us know where you're joining the conversation from. Christian, we see you in first first one in today, which means that you win the famed crocheted bathtub today. So uh, congratulations to you, Christian, for that. And everybody else that's that's coming in and joining us here live, let us know where you are. We know that you're spread out all over the internet. You may be on Facebook. You may be on LinkedIn. You may be on YouTube. You may be one of our many, many many, many followers on Twitch, but let us know where in the world you are. It is always fun to see where everybody joins this conversation from. If you're not familiar, uh, we come here to Context and Clarity every weekday at 4 p.m. Eastern for one reason, so that we can find clarity around the things that matter most to you. And most of the time, our audience is architects. That may not be the case today because we're simulcast all across the, the internet. So we may have some with us today that are not architects. They may be anything else. They may be attorneys. They may be teachers. They may be whatever. So all of you are welcome to this conversation today. Uh, we're we're looking for clarity around a single topic that matters most to your success. And so I think to to today's topic is a really interesting one. I think there are going to be a lot of people interested in this conversation today. And we've got a great guest for you that we'll introduce to you here in just a minute or two. Um, I guess I also need to say, if you're listening to us in the future, in the podcast version of Context and Clarity Live, welcome. Thanks for listening. You can find all of the past guests, all of our past recordings of these live sessions right where you are now. You can go to gablemedia.com or wherever you consume podcasts, and you can find not only the daily short form version of Context and Clarity, but these live versions where Catherine and I host a special guest every week. So Catherine, hi, how are you? Hi, I'm great. Excellent. I'm great. <laughs> I, you know, I always laugh when you talk about the future, if you're watching it in the future, because I used to make my kids write letters to their future selves and put it in the Christmas um, ornament box. And then they would then get a letter from their past self. And I always think about that. I think that's a really cool concept. Yeah. And I think it, you know, when we're talking about time shifted, um, time shifted content, I guess, is really what we're talking about when it comes to, well, pretty much everything that we consume anymore, right? Netflix or podcasts or whatever. But uh, the other thing that fascinates me, and this is this is literally why I say every single day, tell us where you are, say mm -hmm. hi, and let us know where you're joining from, because it always fascinates me that just about every day. Um, so this is a completely U.S. centric comment. So apologies to those of you who are not in the United States, but where I sit here in Indianapolis, Indiana, and do this do this show, it absolutely fascinates me that we have people joining us who are already in the future. They're in Australia. They're in New Zealand. I know so, that cracks me up. Yeah, I mean, That's if true. I was. They're all over the place. They, they are. Yeah. And if I was into betting, I guess I would just ask them, you know, put it in the comments section who won the Yankees game today. Um, so that, um, so Jack, that I can. You don't really think it works like that though, right? I, I do mean, think you know it that's works. not the way it is. I okay. do. I do literally think it works that way. All right. I'll talk to you about that later. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> um, for those of you who are on Facebook, so just, just a little bit of ground rules here because of Facebook's privacy policy, which we appreciate. Uh, the Entree Architect Community Facebook group is a private closed group. So uh, because of Facebook privacy policy, your information cannot be shared outside of Facebook. And that's great. However, if you would like to show up on the screen in the comments, uh, you can see some people showing up with their name and some people showing up as Facebook user. If you would like to show up with your name there instead of Facebook user, you can allow uh, that information to be shared by going to the link that you see on the uh, bottom left of your screen that Catherine uh, posted there for us, chat dot restream dot io slash facebook that will uh enable you to give 
Facebook and Restream, which is the platform that we use here, the ability to communicate and we can see your name on the screen. So if you would like to engage in that way, that's fine. If not, that is also fine, but that is an opportunity out there for you uh, in case you want it. In case you don't want to be Facebook user today, um, you can be whatever your name is. So uh, that's, I know, that's I know who they are though. I mean, I can, I'm reading the other one, so I know who you are. Yeah. It's well, that's, one person does. if you ever wondered who big brother is, yeah, it's me. It's Catherine. Turns right. out. <laughs> it does turn out that it's, it's Catherine. Yeah. All right. So lots, lots of people, uh, checking in with us here today. I see Gene in Houston and I see uh, hi from South Florida and Facebook. I bet that's Leslie. Yeah. Uh, Chris Novelli, I see you in uh, Massachusetts and Hans in Portland, Maine and everybody else. Thank you for joining us today. As you come in, say hi, let us know that you're here and let us know where you're joining the conversation from. And it's probably time for me to introduce our special guest today. Um, we Many of you know that we craft our entire week, our entire Context and Clarity Week around the topic that we're going to discuss with our special guests. And so all week we've been talking about career paths and practice models and and, and um, making a plan to meet your career goals, et cetera. Today we're gonna, going to talk about designing your career. And there's nobody better to talk about designing your career than our special guest today. So our special guest today is a creative agent of change. She's a doer and a big picture thinker. She's a trained facilitator and the founder of Build Yourself. She spent her entire life supporting and empowering women and is driven by a passion for helping women in creative fields move past the obstacles that hold them back and making workplaces better places for women's talents. What we're going to talk about today, though, are not quote-unquote women's issues. They're issues that impact all of us. And so with that, Maya Sharfi, welcome to Context and Clarity Live. Hey there. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Oh, thanks for joining us. I'm really, uh, Catherine and I have been been uh, texting back and forth and talking back and forth all week. Uh, we're excited about this conversation today. Uh, we 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 tend to listen to a lot of podcasts. You know, we of course we've combed through your website a bit and things like that as we prepare for these conversations. And um, this, it's interesting to me. As we've had conversations, both in Clubhouse, which is where we started the conversations in the morning yeah. at 9 a.m. Eastern, for any of the for any of you out there that want to participate in those, um, it's interesting to see the different faces that have shown up for this group of of uh, topics this week, and um, there's been a lot of interest, uh, even to the fact that I did commit to having sort of an off topic. Uh, clubhouse conversation next week on accountability partners and mentoring. <laughs> okay. So we're, we're going to, we're going to add that as a, at some point next week, it won't be in the 9 a.m. slot. We'll do it at noon or something. I don't know, but, but uh, it's really spurred a lot of conversation and there are an awful lot of people that are curious and, and interested in this idea of, of designing your career. So, I thought maybe the appropriate place to start today with this conversation is that, as you can imagine, and, and I know that you probably deal with this exact same thing with, with your own clients, um, our audience members, whether they're architects or not, right, they share a variety of experiences, um, and some of them are just starting out, right, that maybe, maybe they're 20 years, or what would the math be, 22 years old and just graduating from design school, or maybe they're an employee of a firm, or maybe uh, they've circled a date on the calendar. And this is, Catherine mentioned this earlier, they've uh, circled a date on the calendar and said, 2021 is my year, and they're getting ready to start their own thing. Right. Um, or maybe they've had their own thing for a long time. Was it 27 years? <laughs> um, but if 25 years, okay. I mean, if you're talking about me, but well, it's a good benchmark. Um, yeah. But I guess I would say that that it's really the professional condition, right? It, it's everybody is somewhere and it doesn't mean that any of us are in the same place. So 
when we talk about designing your career with all the different contexts that may be in the audience right now, um, where do we start? Where's the appropriate place to start? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so what I, what I just want to throw in to respond to what you said, Jeff, about this idea of like, yeah, 22 years old versus I've had a 22 year career. Right. And so, yeah, I, th- we have this sense that you design your career when you graduate from college and figure out what you want to do with your life. But actually designing our career is something that we need to do at all levels of experience. And, um, you know, we have to do it not just as employees. We also have to do it as business owners, because at every stage, designing your career is about figuring out what your next growth edge is going to be and making sure that your career facilitates it. And it's also about making sure that your career facilitates the priorities that you have outside of work, right? You know, that your work is actually facilitating your life, right? And so really aligning what you do with those design constraints, right? As a, you know, so, so as a, as a quick background, um, I actually have a dual training, so I'm trained as a women's empowerment facilitator, but I also have a background in landscape architecture. And I fell in love with the design process before I even knew what to do with it. And one of the incredible things about about uh, use the design process is that no matter what stage you're at in, in your career, it kind of has a model. It is a model for how we can adjust things and get that kind of holistic solution that we're looking for. And for people in your audience who are designers, you're probably doing it for your clients all the time, right? You know, when I was in design school, um, you know, one of my one of my uh, colleagues was, you know, designing this incredible park where it was an ice skating rink, but it was also, you know, processing water, but it also was a, you know, like a botanical garden and there were basketball courts like woven. It was amazing. And she was integrating all these things. And that's the kind of thing that we can do with our careers if we actually get intentional about what we want and then have a process for figuring out how to integrate things. So, you know, to go back to your question, well, where do you start? It's the place that we always start with who we are and what drives us. And that sounds really woo woo, right? It's like, okay, so I just like do like a, like, what's my purpose worksheet? (laughs) Like make a mood board? Like, what are you talking about? But there is a lot of data in what drives us and what we love in what we do on the day to day. And even if you just start with, okay, when I think about the last two or three days, where did I feel myself getting lost in flow and getting really excited and, you know, losing track of time. And when did I feel like I was slogging through things? Well, that's the beginning of your data points about what drives you and what doesn't drive you. So, um, you know, as a, for quick, as a quick example, I had a client who was a senior associate in a design firm. And whenever people asked her, what, what's your five-year plan? She had no clue what to do. And she, you know, she was, I, I don't know, stop asking me. But when we really looked at her days and what aligned and what didn't, she realized she loved the process of working with and problem solving with clients. She loved the process of doing that with, with other consultants. And when she looked to say, what are the roles in the level above me that would align with that? She saw that the principals in her office were doing a lot of that coordination and collaboration. And so she realized a way that she might maximize her ability to use that skill with her ability to also, you know, achieve other things she wanted in life aligned in that role, right? And sometimes it doesn't look like a role. Sometimes it looks like a specific accomplishment that you want to achieve, right? It can show up in a lot of different formats and we can, you know, of course dive into that, but where people oftentimes don't, what people miss sometimes is really starting with you and what drives you and looking at that with specificity before you start figuring out, well, okay, but what would I do that would align me, uh, allow me to maximize that, to find that greater alignment? Yeah, I I love that concept. And, you know, one, one of the things that, uh, Christian's got a great point up on the screen that we'll get here, get to here in just a second. But um, one of the things that I've heard you talk about before in, in podcast interviews that, that we've actually talked about in uh, context and clarity on on a different topic it was probably more in terms of um, productivity topic. But you've talked about the eighty twenty rule or Pareto's principle um, in in looking at. One of the things that I love about the about Pareto's principle is you can apply that in all different kinds of ways, right? It's not just 
It's not just productivity. It's not just this, but it could simply be, ex- or not, simply is not the right word, but it could be what you just said, right? This is what really drives me. This is where I find my flow. That's probably going to be the 20%, right? It's, it's the 80% is probably not uh, getting us into, into our flow. So I love, I love that. Uh, I love that idea. Um, Christian this morning on, uh, on clubhouse said the same thing. Thank you. Um, he said, uh, I'm designing a new career and I feel stuck in schematic design. How can I move past that to get to design development, which I, I thought is, has its own genius in terms of, uh, the terminology that we use. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I love Christian. I love that. Um, and you know, you're thinking about it exactly right. Right. So, um, you know, we have the, sometimes if you, if you're trained in design, right, you have the skills, but you need to apply them to a new context, right? So like, what does schematic design and design development mean in career design? And so what I do with my clients is that we identify what those design options could, well, okay. So when you say a couple things, when you say schematic design, I guess design development is really about like the details. So let me, let me walk you through the schematic design piece of it and then the design development. So what I do with my clients is we say, okay, what are some options for how you might realign your career? And we, we call them, you know, I refer to them as career moves, right? So, and what a lot of people sometimes give up is that there's ways to find that alignment that you don't have to kind of burn every, like blow everything up and burn it all down and, you know, start over. So there are so many clients who I've worked with where, they wanted more flexibility or they wanted um, to be able to do a kind of project that they wanted to do more of. And they thought, oh, I need to you know, quit my job and start my own thing in order to have that. But it turns out that there might have been another pathway where they could either advocate for what they wanted or initiate a project or move into a new market or develop a new department. Right. Um, and so there's so many times where we might be able to find a design option. Right. You know advocate for this, create this initiative, pivot to this career, start your own thing. And so what I like to do is before people jump straight to quit my job and start my own thing or straight to I'm going to, you know, I'm going to pivot careers, right? Is I like to say, okay, well, let's look at your options and are there less dramatic ways we might do this? And let's, let's figure out what would need to happen in order to get there. And then to design development, that's where you get into really brass tacks details of how to get there. So for example, if you're trying to um, if you're trying to bring in a new client group into your firm, what you might do is see if you can get a first project. Okay, well, we've never done work for housing authorities. Well, how did other companies, how did other firms that work with housing authorities get their first housing authority job, right? And then basically, okay, what did they do? Can I break it into a step-by-step process, right? How do I construct this? And then, all right, like, what if I did the same thing, right? Let me just try to do the same thing. And if it doesn't work for me, then if I hit any obstacles, I'll figure out how to get around them, right? Um, or um, all the way down, all the way to, uh, to yeah, ba- basically, you know, if you're pivoting careers, okay, well, what are the careers that are out there? Do I have any skills gaps between me and this, right? If I want to move into the tech space, um, here's what my CV looks like. What are they asking for on the job description? And is there anything that I have a gap on? And First of all, I always recommend applying because you never know who else is in the pool. But if you find out consistently that you have a gap, okay, well, then you have a problem to solve. How do people solve this gap? How do I get this skill? How have other people gotten this skill? Right. And so it just, you know, in some ways it's, it's, I think because it's our career, we think of it as being kind of mystical or, you know, abstract or uncertain. You know, I even had a filmmaker, aspiring filmmaker client, and she used this method and she was like, oh, great. And she she's like, I've been wondering for 15 years how to get how to, you know, get a film produced. And with this method, I I stalked other people. I figured out how other people did it. And now I know the answer. Right. Like, will it work for me? We'll have to see. Right. I'll have to try it. But like, okay, it's not brain science. Right. (laughs) It's, uh, it's, uh, glorified stalking. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here, folks. We're advocating for, for stalking, um, or, or not. We can, we can figure out a different term for it, but, um, you know, you know, I, somebody, 
Uh, let's see. Somebody had a, a great follow-up for Christian. that said, start with the end goal and work your way back, which is a lot of what you just, what you just talked about. Uh, one of the things that I wonder about, and someone, somebody brought this up, maybe it was Erica brought this up on Clubhouse this morning, this idea of serendipity. Yeah. And um, when, when they were talking about this morning, I, I, I thought, you know what, that, that's, that really was the catalyst for me to be where I am today. When I think about it, you know, I graduated from school and, you know, got, had my first job, et cetera, et cetera. But it was those people that tapped me on the shoulder and said, Hey, you're really good at this. Go, go work on this and, and do this and do that. I never would have done that right on my own. It was some, some sort of inter- intervention, you know, whatever, whatever you believe in, however you see that. But when we're, when we're talking about this, idea of designing our careers, what, what role does serendipity or something play and, and how, how much, um, how much latitude do you give it? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, okay. So I kind of like to break it into two layers, right? So like one is, one is stuff that might be out of your reach, but is not insanely out of your reach, right? Um, so I'll, I'll give an example. One of my clients who was earlier in her career wanted to become a project manager, right? Get promoted into project manager. She works at a large firm, right? Okay. Um, but then the other one is like those big shots, right? Um, I want to be, um, you know, I want to be a full-time artist, right? And I want my artwork to support me, right? So that is, um, that's a, it's a, harder reach because we know that there are less opportunities for people to make a living as full-time artists. Um, you know, kind of like the NBA superstar route versus the, (laughs) so, so I think there's different logics for each one. So when it comes to something like a project manager, wanting to be a project manager, it may feel out of your reach, right? Many of us who are listening are like, that's not out of your reach. That's totally doable. But depending on your situation, something may feel out of your reach. And so what we need to do and we need to do this, whether it's the big shot or things that are more reasonable, is we need to actually own what we would like to occur and communicate it. There's so many ways that we, and I, and I think actually this is a really important time to kind of name gender, right? This can show up for men, but I would say specifically for women, women are socialized to kind of limit their ambitions. And so it's like, oh, well, like that's never going to happen for me. They're never going to choose me. Um you know, I had a client who was a woman of color and in a in a coaching session, she was like, well, yeah, I've had my eye on that leadership job for the entire region, but they're never going to choose me. I'm a blank woman, right? A, a change of detail. I'm a black woman with a non-traditional pathway. They're never going to choose me, right? And so your sense of what's possible for you is possibly skewed. And so don't censor what you want and make sure that you're talking about what you want and that you're also communicating it. So that client who wanted to be a project manager, she said to her bosses, hey, I'm interested in this. Oh, you're not qualified yet. Oh, okay. Well, what do I need to do in order to up my qualifications? Oh, you got to get this and this. Great. I worked on those things. Hey, just want to let you know I'm still interested. Hey, here's my update on how I've gotten this, hey, I got this stretch opportunity. Hey, are there any opportunities? And you're not pressuring, but you're just like, hey, I'm here. I'm here. I'm still interested. I'm here. Hey, right. And um, when that position did open up, right, you know, even though she was a little bit lower on the experience level, she was top of mind. She was doing the work to show up to be ready. And so you can kind of line yourself up for that opportunity, that serendipity. And, um, you know, we do have to, I think, just acknowledge that privilege does play a role. So we we do know that men, um, there's a study by the research firm, I think, Catalyst, and they looked at promotion decisions. And what they found was that men in the study, the promotion decisions, the, the decision to promote them was most often made on the basis of their future potential, right? Like, hey, you would be good at this. Whereas women, it was their past accomplishments, right? So, oh, you've done this before, you can do it again. So there is unconscious bias that plays in in our ability to kind of imagine a more ambitious future for men, for people who come from, who are white, right? Rather than people of color. It's like, that's a dynamic that I think is important to name, but generally the way that you start is by desiring it and then by communicating it and just like doing the work and showing up and like staying top of mind. Right. So, so that's the first one. 
So do we want to talk about like the big shot NBA superstar <laughs> serendipity? Yeah, I think so. Because that would be kind of like, I had a question about dreaming big. Like, how do you not limit yourself to what you think is possible, but what you really want, even though that's not possible. So it sounds like that's more the super star yeah. version. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that you need to dream big no matter what, because your sense of what's possible might be skewed. So one of the ways that you can dream big, this is like a thought exercise, um, um, uh, but what you can do is you can say, okay, what would my dreams be? And then you can say, all right, well, if I had to, like, if I was going to McDonald's and I was like ordering a Coke and they were like, ma'am, would you like to supersize that? Like, and I like ended up walking out with like a Coke so big that I had to like hold it in two hands. Like, like that's like the big gulp version, right? So what would be the big gulp version of my dream, right? So, um, I don't know. Jeff or Catherine, do either of you have a dream um, that you have that you're willing to share? And maybe we can kind of supersize it for you. Mm. What's your dream? I don't know what your dreams are, actually, Jeff. I already know what my dreams are. Well, go ahead. What's your dream? What dream are we going to supersize here? Um, Well, like I would love to have my podcast be able to support half my income. Okay. I love it. I love it. Okay. So... There's no right answers to this, but Jeff, your and my job is to come up with wild, absurd ideas for how to supersize that, right? And like, <laughs> let's just try to like outdo the other, right? Okay, yeah. so, um, all right. Um, Catherine, what if your podcast is the number one podcast in America? That's never gonna happen. That's my original, that's my, that's my, yeah. <laughs> that's my okay. immediate, well, that's well, well, Jeff, give, give us a supersize. Supersized above, uh, above. That is supersized. I'll give you that, Maya. That was good. Yeah, I mean, you know, no wrong answers. Just throw something out there. So, what if what if your podcast is the most? Because I I know what her podcast is. What if your podcast is the most popular um, home renovation podcast in the world, and it gets picked up by scripts for HGTV? Love it. What if your podcast is actually a subscription service for um, people who are improving their home and becomes part of like a whole lifestyle? So you have ongoing subscription revenue and it's like a company that can support like multiple livelihoods. Go, Jeff. Yep. I'm writing that down. <laughs> okay. That sounds, that sounds good. What, what if your podcast branches out from the subscription service? and becomes an actual service model or, 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 or a network model that starts to connect your listeners with your guests and service providers. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Okay. I love yeah, it. So, I like so, that. so when you're generating the big ideas, they don't need, you're not committing to them. You're, you know, like I actually sometimes tell my clients, some of them have to be super crazy. Like you would never do them because that's how you know that you're stretching your sense of what's possible. Oh yeah. Yeah. That makes total sense. And also just my own limitations. I can see that I'm not believing things are possible and that's a big issue with the whole thing. Right. Yeah. With achieving goals is not believing that you can do it. And then sometimes it is doable. Right. And then sometimes even if it's, wild and crazy there's a seed in the like in the idea that like right for example um you know that that last idea of jeff's right that might open up some possibilities for thinking about a business model or mm -hmm. this is one of mine i you know don't censor yourself on your dreams i was like i would love to have high tea every afternoon right i get really hungry at like 3 p.m wouldn't it be awesome if i could just stop work and like have tea with tiny sandwiches on three tiers, right? Like, and do I really want to have high tea? Like maybe, I don't know, but like I wrote it down and then it starts to um, influence. Yeah. What do I, how do I want to spend my days? What do I want to, you know, do I want to, um, you know, do coaching half day and then have studio art time, right? And so the seed of the idea that might be right for you mm. is something embedded in the big idea. Yeah, I love that. Well, do you have a, you, you're going to, first, you're going to need to get one of the tiered plates things. Do you have one of those? <laughs> yeah. 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 You're, you're almost listeners, there. Your listeners can crochet me one. <laughs> <laughs> it goes, it's a, a tiered thing and a uh, crocheted tiered thing and a bathtub ensemble. Yeah. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. You know, the Museum of Fine Arts used to have a high tea thing and somebody would be playing music and you could have little cakes. That was really awesome. They don't do that anymore. Yeah. 
That was yeah. very civilized. <laughs> yeah. That's so, very civilized. So the one thing that I just want to say about like when your dreams require like the NBA superstar, right? Um, so you got to let yourself want. But then sometimes if the things that you do want are long shots, right? Like, for example, that person I mentioned who wants to be a full time artist, what you can do is you can you can set your right. For example, um, the woman who wrote Big Magic or like she she didn't give up her day job for a really long time, but she kept writing. She kept putting her stuff out there. You know, there's an example of someone in who wanted to be a New Yorker cartoonist and he submitted, submitted, submitted. He's in um, the book Grit, which is by Angela Duckworth. And he, you know, got feedback and learned and it took him a long time, but he finally got his cartoons in. And I think he eventually became the editor. So when there's something that we want that is really a long shot, what we can do is we can not give up our day job or our backup plan because that's how things fall apart. And I'm not a, I'm not a fan of, I think like it's important for people to have stability, but to work on that long shot and to keep consistently working towards it so that we can put ourselves in the position where luck and serendipity can pick us up. And if it doesn't happen, hopefully we like our craft so that we actually enjoy the process of consistently putting something out there, even if we never get picked up by luck or serendipity. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, I, I've always loved it when you hear this idea of the, the 10 year overnight success, right? right? Um, I think that's important. I think, I think the reality of the grind, and, and I don't mean that in a super negative way, but you know, it, it's, none of us have gotten to where we are, I'm assuming just in a very easy way. There was some, there was some hard work and some grinding going on. And, um, one of the, as you broke that into two pieces, one of the things that strikes me, if we take the, the big dream and, and, and sort of uh, one upping it over and over and then apply that back to the, the first idea and, and, and digging into all the obstacles that may be there because of privilege or lack thereof, um, how, how do you, when, when we, we have, we have to understand reality. Okay. We, you know, there, there are going to be some things that are open to me because of just who I am and where I am and how I was born that won't be open to some other people. Mm -hmm. um, if, if that is your reality and you're, you're facing that, then do you have any tools for, okay, I see this obstacle. How do I go over it, around it, yeah. move it, whatever? Yeah, yeah. So one of the reasons why we have to have the goal, the big dream is that it gives us something to take action towards because when we're taking action, that's when we start to see the obstacles as they really are versus what we think they are, right? And you guys are both business owners. So you also know you start with a vision for what your business is. And then it turns out clients don't care about this. They actually care about that, right? So like the plan always adjusts as it hits the ground. And it's the same thing, no, ma no matter what we're working on, that's ambitious. So what starts to happen when we face those obstacles is that we can either change our strategy or sometimes we can find a way around, right? And so I'll, g I'll give an example from a friend of mine. So um, Tamara Roy uh, is a, um, she's a uh, principal at Stantec. And one of the things she found in her career was that as she was growing, she's now a principal, right? But as she's growing into principal, it was harder for her to do business development than some of the men because um, a lot of her colleagues had relationships with their like fraternity brothers, right? Like they, you know, like the old boy, boys club was real, right? Yep. So, so one of the things that she did is she she kind of branched out into less of a, a um, like residential development direction and worked in arts and institutional, right? So she was doing dorms. She loves housing and multifamily housing, but she did dorms instead and worked with mass art, right? Um, and because she found that a lot of those institutions had more women and um, had more gender diverse people in, in those decision making um, roles. And so sometimes us need, okay, so I think that women, people of color, people who don't come with the same privileges, it's so, it's not okay that they don't have those same opportunities. Right. However, 
as the individual, how do you adjust to the reality, right? Of course, the system should change, but how do you adjust to the reality? Sometimes the way that you find an, a third pathway actually adds value, right? Um, sometimes that third path creates an approach that nobody's ever seen before that actually transforms things, right? And so being open to finding another way around, sometimes it's even a better way around, right? So, I, and I want to just be really clear that I'm not advocating that, um, you know, people with less societal power should just like suck it up and find their other way around. But from an individual perspective, approaching that challenge with curiosity can sometimes produce a better outcome for you. Yeah. Well, I, I think and I'm, I'm totally with you on, on, on the not sucking it up piece. The, the, yeah, there, there are some things that need to change, but at the same time, I think, if things have, if certain things have been a certain way for 400 years, right? The the quote that's often attributed to Einstein, right? If we keep doing it over and over and expecting a different result, um, it may take some creativity. It may take some different approaches, and and um, uh, you know, look around for the. I'm not trying to make this terribly political, but look around for the past 15 or 18 months, right? It's it, doing it the same way is not going to change anything. So, um, so I, I, I appreciate what you're saying there. Um, the, someone had a, um, a comment, I think it was Mark actually that made a comment about, um, the dreams getting in the way, the, the big dreams getting into the way of, of, uh, of progress. Maybe I forget exactly how we said it, but, but, uh, I, I know I can, that caught my eye because I can dream a lot. Right? Yeah. I can spend, there you go. Sometimes my big dreams get in the way of my everyday progress. Yeah. Um, how, how do we, what's the appropriate way to rein that in? Maybe that may not be the right way to ask it, but yeah. that's all I got. Yeah. Okay. So I have a thing that I, it's not my concept. It comes from a guy named Scott Belsky who wrote a book called mm -hmm. making ideas happen. Mm -hmm. um, it's called a someday maybe list. And it is your list. So, so um, it's your list that you put all your big ideas on that you don't yet have the capacity to act on. So Scott Belsky's background is that he's, he's an MBA and he loved creatives, but he felt like creatives were less likely to achieve things <laughs> than non-creatives. He was like, they have pro pro problems getting things done. So what <laughs> What he noticed was that um, he actually has this incredible graph um, in his book where it's like um, the excitement for a project and the duration of the project is on like the x-axis. So at the start of the project, your excitement is super high. You're like, I'm starting <laughs> this thing. I'm like yeah. starting this, you know, um, collective of afternoon tea drinkers. Like, yes, right? <laughs> and, then, and then like... Tea caddies for everyone. And then <laughs> as the project goes on, that's when you get to what he calls the messy middle, where you're implementing, you're in the design development and, you know, and like construction documents and construction administration of life, right? And so that's where your excitement decreases. And what people do at that phase, what some people do at that phase is they get distracted by another shiny object, which is another big idea and that they abandon their project in the messy middle and they go back to the beginning at the start of a project because that's where they get most excited. And so what he says you should do is you keep a Sunday meeting list. So when that shiny object comes on, comes up, you're like, oh, I'm in the messy middle. That's why I feel this way. Hey, this is still, I mean, there's some things in life that are worth quitting, right? But like, oh, nope, I really, this is still worth my investment. I've gone halfway. I still want that outcome. I'm going to close the loop of this project. And then I get to go back to the someday maybe list and figure out what do I do next, right? And so it becomes a little bit about like, mm -hmm. what, what are you working on now? And then having a place for the big ideas so that when you're ready, they can come out of the wings. Yeah. I like that. I'm going to get a special notebook for that. So that's yeah. like a pretty notebook that I can put my, oh, maybe I'll use my, I already got a pretty notebook with nothing to put in it. Maybe I'll put my special, uh, my special dreams in there. I love it. I love it. Yeah, it. We want to like, when, when you fill up your notebook, we will, we will, um, I guess we'll like, Uber eats you a big gulp and we'll like get it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that takes two hands. To, yeah. To, that'd be yeah. Funny. I'll, just go on, I'll, take, I'll take a picture of myself with one. I'll go get one somewhere. Like, 
So, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So should we, um, should we, you know, I, one thing that I think is kind of interesting is that there was a serendipity question and then people put it all different ways. Like what if, what if there are things that aren't in my control was one kind of, I think of, I was reading it as kind of like a fear of planning. And then another one, someone said the, um, everyone has a plan until I get punched in the mouth, which is, you know, not the most positive spin on serendipity. You know, you could look at it. But anyway, so I just thought that was interesting that people have those reactions when they're, when they're asked to dream about things like, yeah, you don't have any control anyway. So what's the point? Kind of that's my takeaway from those comments. Yeah. Well, sorry, Jeff. Yeah, go for it. But I, I think that's, I think that's a good. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's a it's a bit of a harsh analogy that uh, comes from that famous quote f- from uh, Mike Tyson. But I, but I think it's a good point too, right? We, if we go back, um, what is it, fourteen, fifteen? It's May thirteenth, so fourteen months ago. Essentially, everything in the United States. Again, apologies because this is completely U.S. centric. I know the timeline is different in other places in the world, but 14 months ago, almost to the day, things shut down, mm-hmm. right? COVID, we've, we finally um, realized perhaps what was going on. Things were shutting down. Uh, I know that there are people in this community whose businesses, right, especially if they had a specialty in hospitality, restaurants, um, hotels, something like that. Oh, my gosh right? They got punched in the mouth. Mm -hmm. Um, So I I think, again, it's a bit of a a violent analogy, but what what happens? You're designing this, you're going along, and life happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So two things. The first is that I think it is, it is really, I think it's really important to kind of know what your ultimate outcome, your North Star is, and to not not let go of that because things don't go to according to things never go to according to plan, right? Adversity happens and it happens in minor ways and it happens in huge major world shaking ways, right? You know, the only thing that we know to be true is that things do not go according to plan, but that doesn't mean that you need to let go of your North star. It might take you longer to get there. It might mean that you have to find an alternative way to get there. Right. Um, But I think, not letting go. If when you totally let go of your North Star, what you're doing is you're saying, you know, I am going to just, you know, I'm just going to be totally like, I'll let the world move me wherever it takes me. And I'm, I don't have partial agency. I don't have full control. Nobody has full control, but I'm not going to have some control where I can have it. Right. I'm not going to co-create my life with the conditions that the world or universe gives me. Right. So, so that's one, right. Hold on to those outcomes. Um, one of the things that I work on is, you know, like, but it was my plan. It needs to very like the world isn't matching up to my vision. Right. Like, okay. Right. Like also sometimes that's where interesting things happen. Right. Like that's like responding to the changing conditions is also sometimes where innovation and where, you know, growth in your life comes from. Right. So kind of recognizing that as well and not being so tied to it has to happen exactly how I said it was going to happen, which is something that I really struggle with as like a, reforming perfectionist. But the other thing is that the process is part of the work, right? So in my programs, um, you know, my career design program, for example, includes implementation, right? Like you are taking the first steps towards that career North Star while you're in the program. And the reason why is because issues happen. Your thought about what, you know, let's say your start, your, um, kicking off a new initiative, what you thought people wanted versus what they really want turns out to be slightly different. You misunderstood that. Okay, how are you going to respond? Your inner critic shows up and is like, I can't believe you're doing this. You should just quit. Don't make that call this week. You Maybe you can make it next week. Like, slow down, right? Like, And so taking the action is part of the journey. And in the taking of the action, that's where those innovations happen, right? So um one client of mine is a small firm owner. And when the pandemic hit, um, she had a project in California. She's based in the Midwest. And she, um, you know, so she did her first site visit by like iPad, right? And she like, which is crazy, right? Like, huh, like never could have imagined that. But it turns out it was good enough to get the job done, right? You know, um, 
detailed measurements could have been taken later in another way, but she did her site visit by iPad. She was like, wow, actually, this is great. Like, what if I don't have to take a day and a half and fly out to California to look at the site and then fly back, right? Like, this is way better for me, for my life. It's more efficient for my client, right? And so along the way, as we face the challenges, that's also part of the work. And you know, the last thing I'll say, and because I know this isn't, I don't want to like stray too far into politics, but I do think that there are different societies that have different levels of individual risk and different levels of how far someone can fall if things fall apart for them, right? Um, if you have, if you lose your job and then you have a bunch of medical bills at the same time and, um, you know, you sap your retirement savings to pay for it, right? Like, I think that there are some societies that have a basic bottom floor so that if things fall apart, people are, people don't then really go so far down that they can't pull themselves back up. And so I do just want to acknowledge that I think part of the picture is what is your floor? What happens if the worst case happens? Do you have a backup plan for it? Are you living in a culture that has some kind of a backup plan for you? And I think that's part of the, I think that's part of, I guess the risk calculus, right? When you start right. to think about the big dream. Yeah. So you, you said a couple of things and I'm, I'm starting to connect some dots. So let me try something out on you. <laughs> yeah. Earlier, you uh, called something pretty woo woo. Uh, you talk about mindsets a lot, the inner voices. Um, and a minute ago, you talked about taking action. So, I, I would acknowledge that the mindsets and the the inner voices are things that are at play. I don't I don't know if it's because many of our audience uh, are creatives, uh, designers. I don't I don't know if it's more prevalent in the field. Uh, I know that a lot of us are introverts. Uh, I don't know where it comes from, but I do know that a lot of the audience, including myself, you know, we've got these voices going on a lot and. Uh, we're, we're fighting this fight with the, the little people on our shoulders or whatever they are. Yeah. Is, is taking action, and, and maybe it's imperfect action, but is taking action the, uh, uh, what's the word I want? Is, is that how we battle the voices? Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Yeah, it is. Um, there are mindset tools we can use that are, passive, right? That are like, okay, here's a mantra, right? Or here's, um, you know, here, one of the ones that I like, right? So I, okay, so I call my collection of mindset tools, power habits, they are things that you practice to build your power. And some of them are more passive, right? Um, uh, so for example, one of my favorites is the bar is lower than you think. So um, many if for, for people who deal with imposter syndrome, um, sometimes uh, finding examples of people who are doing it, even if they have, they're maybe doing it at a lower level of quality than you would be doing it. It means that the bar is lower than you think, right? So that's just something you tell yourself. But most power habits are actually actions that you take. So I'll give an example. Um, pitching, uh, propose, don't wait for permission is one of them. So one of the things that I see is sometimes um, many of the women I work with hesitate to put forward an idea, right? Or to put forward, we should do this, right? So I have them keep a log and, you know, three times a week or one time a day or whatever, you propose something instead of waiting for permission. And you don't judge whether it was well received. You celebrate whether or not you can put that little box check in your box that you did it. And they don't have to just be about putting yourself out there. They can also be about setting boundaries, right? They can be about saying yes, but they can also be about saying no, right? So one of my favorites is the no diet. So women can face a lot of pushback when they say no. And that's, you know, a whole another topic. But um, sometimes we say yes to things that we didn't have to say yes to, but we don't realize that because it feels like a compulsion. So I'll put clients on a no diet, say no to something three times a week and just see what happens. Right. And I had a client who did it. She was like, oh my God, I like, I didn't even have to say, I, I realized I was saying yes to stuff. I didn't have to say yes to. I, somehow I have been volunteering myself to project manage other people's projects like to plan them why are you doing that right <laughs> so an action always moves us forward yeah sorry Catherine, you're gonna say something 
Yeah, I was going to say, I never do that. No. A no diet. I like that. Three times. I could do that three times in one week. Say no. I could do yeah. that. Oh, I love your notebook is going to get really I, good. I've been taking notes right now in my not very nice notebook. But yeah, I'm going to put that in there. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. Why is it so hard for us to say no? I don't know. Um, that's a bigger, that's a different podcast, maybe. That's maybe, yeah. I think maybe that's another podcast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there's a lot, there's a lot to it. Yeah. There is, yeah. There's a lot to yeah. it. Yeah. The, um, <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so when when you when you have these tools, right? Whether it's the no diet or um, well, let me. Here, here's what we need to do. And before I ask this question, is that I know on your website. So for those of you who are listening right now, if you go to buildyourselfworkshop.com, you will find Maya's uh, website, and she's got. She's got a lot of great information there. Uh, Masterclass, which I think we'll touch on here in just a second. There you go. Um, Catherine just put up on the screen, uh, if you would like to take advantage of Maya's free career design masterclass, there is a a link up on the screen right now. And for those of you listening, I'm going to try to read this. It's bit.ly, so B-I-T dot L-Y slash three S-S dash context dash clarity. So you can, you can go to that link bit.ly B-I-T dot L-Y slash three S-S dash context dash clarity and take advantage of Maya's free design, free career design masterclass. She's also got a blog there. She's also got a, some, um, at, at build yourself, um, workshop.com. Um, got a blog there, some, some other tools there, uh, that I think th- there's a, a lot of them. What, what I appreciate above about them is they're very bite-sized, right? Here's, here's this action, take this tool, take this action. There's a lot of them there. So very consumable. Um, and, and, and I, I guess catching on to the fact that you're talking about all of these mindsets, you're, you're, you're balancing these things, right? At this, at this point, it's getting, getting visual for me. So you're balancing all of these mindsets that, that we're, we're all kicking around with all these actions and you're creating tools for all of these things. Can you tell us a little bit about the masterclass? Yeah. So the masterclass walks through my process for getting clear on what you want in the next stage of your career and it does that through looking at three key areas so the first is how do you build a confident mindset right how do you do some of the you know some of the mindset work that we you know like thanks to Catherine and jeff for like playing along with me but how do you how do you do that so that you can really choose from a position of power and agency then how do you do what i think christian talked about which is how do you figure out what your options are for that next stage of your career, right, of what you want to achieve. And it looks different for different people, right? For you, it might be growing into the next level of thought leadership in an area that you want to be known for, or it might be, um, you know, growing, um, you know, raising your salary or raising or growing the revenue of your business, right? And so how do you actually break that down into a step-by-step process? So that's the clarity piece. And then the last piece is creativity. So no matter who you are, where you are in your career, you know, we hit points where we plateau or where we want to integrate more fulfillment. And so you're never really done with the career design process because there's always this adjusting and tweaking as we grow. And then there's a next level of learning or challenge or curiosity that comes for us. So I also look at two very, very practical places that you can kind of integrate more creativity or opportunities for fulfillment or meaning into your day to day so that you don't have to blow it all up in order to get that career alignment that you want. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess that is, uh, I guess that's one of the real, the things that I really appreciate about what you're talking about is that, that balance between the, the mindsets, et cetera, the, the voices and things and the action that's very practical that that's very uh, i think you use the word actionable which is you know this this isn't for those of you that are listening to this or those of you that are uh, in the audience live right now yeah there's there's some we're talking about some woo woo stuff but i think most of you if you if you took a little um 
a little pause, you would probably say, yeah, um, I hear that voice. I struggle with that sometimes. Uh, everybody is different, of course. But um, so there's there's some woo-woo stuff that we're talking about, but it's real. And I just like saying woo-woo. Obviously. Yeah, no, it's just... Now it's meaningless. So now it doesn't mean anything. Woo 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 woo. What does that even mean now? It's becoming a song in my head. Somehow. <laughs> um, but I mean, we talk about that, but that is such a strong thing that actually exists. That voice in our—I mean, those voices in our heads and this whole mindset thing. And it's not—I don't know what it, woo. Where does that come from? Is that like woo, woo like ghosts? Is that where woo woo comes from? I don't okay, know. Sorry, sorry. That—that that was my. So, Somebody, somebody in the audience will give us uh, give us the history of it here momentarily. I'm sure, but <laughs> that would um, be it, it would be it'd be appreciated. But um, but I, I do I do really appreciate the um, the the actionable nature of what we're talking about. I mean, this is real talk here, right? This is if you're struggling with this, and I know many of you are. Here's 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 three steps, right? Three steps you can take to change this today. You can take advantage of the, the master class there. Again, it's at bit.ly slash 3ss-content-clarity. So B-I-T dot L-Y is bit.ly if you're not familiar with the uh, link shortening. Um, the um, one thought just went out of my head. Christian, it's it's Maya, M-I-A, uh, or it's, it's pronounced is it pronounced Maya? Is it pronounced Maya? Yeah. Y A. But it's spelled M A. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's there's the uh, the uh, confusion there. Somebody says uh, Chris Voss would maybe tell us we should say no to start the negotiation. Are you familiar with Chris Voss and never split no. the difference? No. Um, so he, Chris Voss, is a former head hostage negotiator for the FBI, and he's got a, he's got a an excellent book called never split the difference. Um, he, he's a, he's a lot like you in that he's got a lot of these concepts, right? He's dealing with trying to get hostages released and things like that. in in these things that most scenarios that most of us could never even really imagine, but he breaks it down into very practical, very applicable steps. And in never split the difference, he has, um, he's pretty much got a scenario for everything, salary negotiation, buying a car, whatever. Right. And, and then he'll tie it back to some fantastical story about, you know, a bank robbery or whatever from, from his career. But, um, I, I think one of the great, great tie ins is he is very good. And I've heard you do this as well on, in podcast interviews, not with a, a hostage taker, but maybe the voice in your head where you basically flip it around and put the impetus back on the voice or put the impetus back on the, the hostage taker and okay, how should we get past this thing that's in, in front of us? Or, you know, I'm, I'm going, I'm going to force you to solve this problem for me in a way or, or, it, and really what he's doing is he's neutralizing the situation, I guess. Mm -hmm. An interesting, uh, whoever brought that up, interesting parallel there. Uh, I know we have reached the top of our hour, and so I appreciate everybody that has been a part of this conversation here today. We, we always appreciate everybody um, that, that joins these live conversations, and I, I, I mean this every time I say this. Uh, I thank all of you for making uh, context and clarity a thing because this did this started I think it was April 9th uh, two, 2020 and we've been going essentially every weekday afternoon at 4 p.m. since then and Catherine's just got a burning desire to say something um, and I'll and you can do that in just a second because <laughs> I know what you're gonna say but um, but but we we really do appreciate everybody making context and clarity what it is because if you didn't show up, if you didn't have these conversations, um, if you didn't share and ask questions, it never would have led to us having a conversation with Maya Sharfi or, or any of the other guests that we have had or will have. And so we, we do appreciate you all uh, being a part of this. 
um, this conversation every weekday and in context and clarity live every uh, Thursday. And Catherine, you, oh, is it my turn? Have, to talk? Go, go, turn. Go, okay, so this is really really exciting. <laughs> Okay, this is really exciting. So this summer in August, August 14th and 15th, we're having, we're going to show up in Vermont at a place to be determined, but we're working on a big uh, block of ho- um, housing. Um, we're going to share and ask questions and do all that in person. And so um, Jeff's going, right? You're going, Jeff. I'm going. I'm going. <laughs> um, Jay and James Polk is going and Michelle. Be t-shirts. There will definitely be some T-shirts, and who even knows what else? And I think there'll be a water park, but I'm not going to the water park because they they freak me out. But someone else might want to go. Anyway, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be a weekend, so reserve the time. And if you want to go, you want to be on the list of uh, more information as it comes up, you know, message me, and we'll get you on the list, okay? Yeah, John, John Joan, who's in? Who's in? Who wants to go to Vermont? I'm so excited to see everybody. Yeah, I just want to put in a little uh, pitch for Vermont in the summer is so amazing. I I spent a little time there last year during the pandemic, and I just totally fell in love. So (laughs) it's amazing. You should. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm, I'm just excited about that. (laughs) I'm looking forward to it. I mean, this is uh, again, we 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 wouldn't be having this conversation right here right now if if it weren't for you know what all of you have turned this into. So uh, I'm looking forward to the next, um, the, the ability to have a meetup in Vermont. Uh, I'm also looking forward to the ability to have live versions of this. I mean, imagine if we were at a conference or something and Maya was with us and we were having a conversation and it's this exact same thing, but we're, we're all in this conversation together. It's a little, it's harder to manage maybe with everybody shouting at the same time, but, um, you know, the level of engagement here, um, and being able to, to really be present and leverage platforms. Uh, this is the things, these are the things that fascinate me. And, and, uh, Maya, I really, I really love the, uh, the exercise, of uh, you know, let's let's one up this idea, right? Yeah. Um, you guys can have high tea and supersize each other's ideas, <laughs> and we can have big big gulps all day, right? <laughs> big, big huge things. I had that. I used to drink that in a coffee, like a thirty-two ounce coffee, and when I was in graduate school, and one of my instructors came up and he's he said, "You know, that's really bad for you, right?" <laughs> to, yeah. Like, yeah, so that's what I think of anytime I, you know, the big Seven Eleven coffee, which is so bad to begin with. I don't know. You all can get your entire summer sugar consumption in one weekend. <laughs> in July. Yeah, and and the good thing is, it's a big hotel. We can't tell you where exactly yet because we don't know. But it's August fourteenth and fifteenth, and this place that we are thinking of getting the rooms, there could be a hundred people could come. So there's no limit in that. I'm just saying, Hi- hypothetically, a hundred people. So far, we have uh, six. Well, so we just need 94 more people. So that's a big slurp version of the weekend. Yeah. 100 people show up. But if we get, if we get number seven, that's progress. So yeah. we'll, we'll I, I thought we'll have at least seven. 20. Anyway, it'll be really fun. Yeah. yeah, it will be. It will be. Maya, we really appreciate you uh, spending this hour with us and everything that we shared. Uh, and I encourage everybody that's out there, to, uh, like I said, go to buildyourselfworkshop.com. Um, you can learn how you can work with Maya. You can uh, take advantage of the master class here, all the tools that she has. There's lots, lots of things, lots of things. And it's, it's, a, uh, it's a well-written, well-designed website, which I really appreciate. And um, so go check that out. Is there anything else that they need to know or any other place that you would like for them to connect with you? No. So, um, you know, check out that masterclass. That's really the best way to kind of see everything. And I also just want to say, well, I want to say thanks to Jeff and Catherine for having me. And I just want to say, I know there's some folks who were like, we want to hear Maya. So just thanks to, to all y'all. Um, and, you know, Mark LePage, who you're in his network, he, he I, I consider him, I, I don't like the term accountability partner because it's boring, but I, I like the term wing person, wing man or wing woman. So I consider Mark a business wingman. So just, you know, digital high five to you, Mark. And just, <laughs> just yeah, thanks thanks for all y'all. And 
great to kind of just be here with you and, you know, get a chance to spend a little time in your community. So thanks for having me. Yeah. Well, we, we do appreciate you being here and, and f- this is a, a good reminder too, because there were the, really the only way that um, we know who to reach out to uh, for guests is, I, I mean, Catherine and I, we, we have a planning meeting every week and we can dream things up. We've got some, <laughs> we need to do this exercise with Maya. We have some, we have some real stretch guests goals uh, like hope. the Pope. Yeah. Yeah. Barack Obama. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we so we've got some some uh some dreams, but yeah. um we we need your suggestions. Maya was one of your suggestions and here she is. So thank you for that. Um let us know. Message one of us who who needs to be um in this conversation with us next week. Well, that's, we've already got somebody booked for next week, but I, next three, week. three months from now, who needs, who do you want to be a guest? Um, and, um, and, and let us know that because that's important to us that, that who we're talking to is who you want to talk to. So, um, again, Mike, Maya, what's it? Thank you for kicking my dreams in the start button. That's awesome. Is that from Mark? Um, no, no, it's from, um, Leslie. No, from Leslie. Very good. Very good. Yeah, I, I hope I hope you have drawn some inspiration from this conversation. There's a lot. There's a well, lot I know here. I have. So I'm yeah. pretty excited. Yeah. And so Maya, we thank you for that. And uh, a reminder to everybody that th- wherever you're watching this right now, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitch, um, YouTube, th- once we hit stop here, this thing turns into a post and you can go back and watch it over and over and you can take notes and you can continue to comment from wherever, whichever platform you prefer. And of course you can reach out to, to Maya. Uh, you can reach out to Catherine or, or myself and uh, we can keep this conversation going for as long as you want. Um, not necessarily in real time anymore, but that's the beauty of these platforms again. So, uh, so, so do that. Um, With that, a reminder, I will be back tomorrow, same bat time, same bat channel, inside the Entree Architect Community Facebook group um, at 4 p.m. Eastern. Tomorrow's special, though, isn't it, Jeff? Tomorrow is special. Catherine will again be joining me tomorrow, and we're going to start our member spotlights. Um, What was it? Last week, I guess, or two weeks ago. I've lost track two weeks ago we had a member spotlight with michelle and uh, james and jay and so we're going to transition that now into into celebrating a member every once in a while every couple of weeks probably and so tomorrow we'll have erica spade as our guest and we're going to hear about erica's story we're going to be able to talk to erica and we're going to be able to see erica on the screen which is uh, i've described this before but my life is essentially sitting here looking at myself on the screen, talking to myself while I'm looking at myself on the screen and Mm. reading your comments. So I really value being able to see other human beings. And so tomorrow we will be able to do that with, uh, with Erica, a, uh, a member of the uh, Entree Architect and Context and Clarity community will be joining us as our guest and our member spotlight tomorrow. So that's what's on tap tomorrow. I will also be on Clubhouse at 9 a.m. Eastern for anybody that wants to join me. And um, we'll, we will uh, continue the conversation there. So thank you to all of you, Maya especially. Thank you for joining us. And uh, with that, everybody, please take care of yourself. Be well. Stay safe. Take care of those uh, around you and take a little bit of time to breathe tonight. Maybe take a little bit of action against some of those voices and uh, say no, say no, (laughs) say no, get rejuvenated and come back again tomorrow, ready to do it again, because we're going back at it. So thanks everybody. Appreciate all of you and I'll see you around somewhere sometime soon. Thanks everybody. Bye. Bye.